it's the start of the school year in your chemistry class and you're going to be going through significant figures. You're going to be going through significant digits. So your teachers will typically introduce them by showing you some examples with numbers and you're going to go through and look at when a zero counts and when it doesn't and all the numbers one through nine are always significant. And they usually say things like if the zeros are in the middle of two non-zero digits then that will always be significant. And if you have zeros to the left, those are never significant. And if you have zeros to the right, it depends on whether you have a decimal place or not. If you have a decimal place, it'll be significant. If you don't, then it won't. Okay? But what I want to do today is I want to translate sig figs into the other side of that. Why do we have these? Because you're going to spend all year doing these, and in fact, a lot of you are going to get very frustrated by getting marked down on them on labs and on problems. So I want to justify their existence a little bit and talk about what's tricky about them and, and and, and why we do them, why we spend so much effort on them. So it's important with sig figs to understand that we're, we're breaking free of the realm of math. We're no longer looking at this strictly in a numerical sense. We're now do, doing this as more of a measurement. Okay? So a few years ago I constructed this. And it's just a, it's just a long stick and, and 100 is over here and 0 is over here. And there's a red dot right here where my finger is. Okay, and where is that red dot? And I have another stick that's very similar, except instead of 0 and 100, it has by tenths marked off. And if we put them and line them up just right, the two red dots both appear in the same place. They're both right here. And when we look at how to measure, these two come out differently. This one, we're really not sure where it is. It's somewhere between 0 and 100 looks to be about 60 or 70, but when we get this on here with more lines, it clearly now is between 60 and 70. In fact, we can now say that not only is it between 60 and 70, we now know that it's probably 63 or 64. And in fact, I do have a third one where every single line is marked off, and the red dot again is in the same spot, which now clearly you can see that the red dot is between 63 and 64, so it would be 63 point something. But if we had taken the other two away and we went back to the first one, and I had asked where this red dot was and you had shouted out, oh, it's 63.3, you would have been wrong even though you were right. And that's very tricky for a high school student to kind of understand why that is what it is. So what, what's wrong with your answer of 63.3 for this, even though that's where it's located, you are misrepresenting your measurement. And so measurement comes with a set of guidelines, a set of rules on how to communicate how good your measurement is. When I measure this with this ruler, it's a really poor ruler. It only marks off every 100 centimeters. So for me to say 63.3 implied that I measured this really well. And so it's misleading because you're not measuring this very well. If we switch that and we go back to this one and I say, okay, it's 63.3, that's an okay statement because it is about 63.3 and I'm I'm very confident in that because I have a better measuring apparatus. So we're trying to communicate how good, of our how good our measurement is. Now when I was in high school I had a big problem with these sets of rules because my chemistry teacher was going through them and it, and it occurred to me that if what she said was true then 6 times 4 would be equal to 20. So I raised my hand and I said, you know, this, the, these rules must be wrong, you're telling me that 6 times 4 is 20. And now that I've been teaching it for a while, I think I understand why this, of course this doesn't make sense to a lot of us, but, but why this is what it is. When you're saying 6 times 4 in math, you mean the number 6 and the number 4. But when you're doing sig figs, you're no longer talking about a numerical value, you're talking about a measurement. So when you say a measurement of 6, 6 centimeters, let's say by 4 centimeters, we're looking at an area, you, when you say 6, what you mean is it's about 6, but I haven't measured it very well. I have an extreme range of uncertainty. So really, in measurement land, six means somewhere between five and a half and six and a half. Somewhere in that range. When I say four, it doesn't mean four exactly. It means it's about four. It's somewhere between about 3.5 and 4.5. And that range complicates your calculation. When I said 24 is an answer in math, that's fine. But when I say that in measurement, I am misrepresenting my measurements. I made two bad measurements, so I can't come up with an answer that's better than those measurements. In fact, if you look at this, if we take the two lower ends here, three and a half by five and a half, which are both within the range of six and four to one sig fig, 
and I multiply them, I get 19.25. If I take the upper ends instead, and I say, okay, six and a half and four and a half, what if I multiply those two? Well, when I multiply those two, it comes out to 29.25. So really, my answer is somewhere between 19 and 30. Well, I can't sit there then and say it's 24. I don't know that it's 24. That's too specific given the vast range of my measurements, the vast uncertainty. So instead, I have to give an answer that a lot of people are uncomfortable with. I have to say 20. Now, some people, they think 19 and 30, we should average that and come out with 24, 24.25. But you know, because then again, you're giving a number that to someone who didn't know that you've averaged that, seems like a very specific number, like you made a very good measurement. Whereas 20, has a wide range of possibilities, and that's what we want to represent our wide range of possibilities. So when we're looking at sig figs, it's very important that we distinguish that we're no longer in the math realm. And so some of the things that we're very uncomfortable with is because we're, we're used to being in that realm of numbers being a mathematical thing, and instead these numbers that we're using are all measurements. So you're going to use significant figures whenever you do anything in the lab. You're going to use them whenever you do a word problem in chemistry or physics because you're assuming that the word problem is based off of lab experiment, and these are all measurements. And so that's, that's a big philosophical t difference that, that is very unsettling. And I think that when we're going through the rules on how to assign sig figs and how to do calculations and round your final answer, it's important to know that philosophical difference in order to be comfortable with what the rules are. Now once we are okay with that, once we're okay saying, okay, I'm working in measurements here, I'm not working in numbers, and so therefore I'm okay with the fact that six times four is 20, then that starts to, starts to make the rules function a little better. If we wanted six times four to be 24, we would have to measure better. We would have to say 6.0 times 4.0. At that point, now I have a much more narrow range. Now it's 5.9 something to 6.1, and maybe 3.9 something to you know 4.1. And so now when I go through, I'm okay saying 24 because the range of answers is very localized around that 24. And so I'm not rep misrepresenting my measurement as being better than what it is. Okay? So that's how I think the rules of sig figs should be translated in order to make more sense as to the purpose behind them.